I'm Elliot Earls. I'm a graphic designer and artist. I've been head of the Cranbrook graduate 2D department for the past 21 years. I am collaborating with Henry and Harris Earls on a show at Wasserman Projects in Detroit. The show opens on March 18th, and I'm going to take a few episodes to um, a few episodes of studio practice to show our collaboration. The show is called Family Matters, and it's no exaggeration to say that family is important. I've even heard people who hate their family talk about the importance of family. So not only does family matter, but our, our family matters have been creative practice. Darlene and I met in art school. She and I have spent the last 35 years in the studio relentlessly making work. Darlene is a metalsmith and writer. She was a silversmith for Tiffany & Company at their Fifth Avenue store in New York. Here, show me this. Just hold it. <laughs> show me the one that you did. <clears throat> it's pretty hilarious. I hope this makes it in. And then I'll do this one. Oh, I'll do this one too. Oh, they're all hairs. Yeah. That's hairs. Oh, hairs, man. You're making it. You're making it. Making it, bro. You're making it. Hey, it's my baby boy. He was good at cutting tails. Yeah, if he sits, the end of it just touches the ground. Yeah. It's like it's not too long. You remember the one that had like a pickle? Uh -huh. What was her name? Remember that girl? And, she, and it had tufts of hair oh, on the yeah, end. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, he did a great job on it. Yeah. An you have an Amish tail. My collaborator, Henry, uh, is 20 and lives in the Bowery and is an artist and designer. Um, his work is focused on, or has been focused on, uh, contemporary art, design, and writing. I'm also interested in publishing ideas. Two years ago, I wrote and designed uh, a broadsheet concerning postmodern nihilism and uh, Friedrich Nietzsche and his ideas uh, and how they affect or have affected contemporary culture. And while my collaborator Harris is 15 and is at Cranbrook Kingswood and has really been focused on oil painting. So if family is so important, why aren't Scarlet and Darlene in the show. Why aren't Scarlett and Darlene in the show? This is chicken, by the way. Well, Scarlett is 18 and is an actress also living in the East Village in New York. She studies drama at NYU. <laughs> Scarlett is not a visual artist. Here, take this. Um, it's a cool prize, Noel won. She got first place and she was really proud in this popcorn competition thing we were having. This isn't quite the right format for her work. And Darlene, on the other hand, has been helping us uh, realize a few things for the show, like this edition of bronze pendant necklaces that she hand cast and fabricated. Quite frankly, she's slammed with her own creative practice. She's been working on a novel for the past four years, which I'll link to above. I told him he was free and he could find his own name. And I waved to him, and he galloped off. His black, full mane fluttered in the wind. Bye, I said, and I turned to go play hopscotch with Kathy Lehman. Susan looked at me puzzled. What are you doing? She said tersely. You ruin everything. Now Gypsy wants to be free, and I will not let her go. Your stupid horse is calling to her. What a terrible mess you have made. You always make a mess. You are very difficult. Susan turned and pulled her horse toward Marcy. I felt terrible. I have heard the word difficult many times when frustration bubbles up toward me. It's a word I cannot shed. I feel terrible. Uh, it's a link to uh, her reading a chapter from the novel. So she's been in the studio working to finish uh, finish this piece. And what can I say? What can I say beyond the obvious about our collaboration? Well, in the field of art and design, there's always been this myth of the artist returning to uh, nature, retiring to the woods, in order to be able to think and to focus uninterrupted on their work. So in 2009, when Henry and Scarlett and Harris were still very young, we bought a cottage on a lake in the woods in northern Michigan. We saw this as an um, opportunity to, to at least in part live this bohemian artist myth 
of a secluded natural life removed from the distractions of the world to live in a cabin studio where we could better focus on our work. We were also really concerned about life in a hyper-connected world. So many people live detached from nature, from their bodies, from the realm of the real. So since 2009, as a family, we've spent June, July, and August pretty much detached from our social network and from screen time. Now, I'm pointing this out and telling you this story because this time of ours together, largely detached from social networks and from screens, lies at the center of the Family Matters collaboration. For the past 12 years, we've spent about a quarter of our year as a family sailing, swimming, wakeboarding, running, gardening. I think that's done. Oh. Paper, you don't want to... Very don't fly too close to the sun, bro. Slide it out. No. I have to check, dude. You're going to burn it, man. During the summer days when not being extremely active, everyone's working on something. Typically, if we aren't sailing or whatever, Harris might be in the guest house garage or in the yard painting. While Henry would be in the living room working on uh, gouache paintings. Darlene's usually writing and reading, and Scarlett would be writing screenplays or reading. With open, unscheduled time, you got to find something to do other than video games, YouTube, and Instagram. So the Family Matters show is a, is a supernatural collaboration, and that's intentionally a pun. It was a supernatural way of working, as in very easy, as well as a supernatural meaning a manifestation or event attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding or the laws of nature. Sweet. And maybe lowered him to the right, you know, you know you need to be like... This is maybe the key idea of this episode. For the past 12 years at Shadowbrook and for the past six months while working on this show, when we were making work, we almost don't talk about it. We haven't really spent a lot of time talking about the work, but we have we have still managed to enter into some really deep communication about the work. It's a strange thing. From the beginning of the artistic journeys with Henry, Scarlett, and Harris, me and Darlene, we've been working as collaborators and peers. So and as head of a graduate design program, I have this flaw where I tend to fill all empty space with words like I'm doing now. But oddly enough, and by contrast, when I work with, or when Darlene and I work together, or when I work with Henry, or I work with Scarlett or Harris, we speak very little. We've, we've made so much work in one another's presence that we really can anticipate uh, each other's next move. Um, the way that we seem to communicate about art is almost supernatural and calls to mind Rupert Sheldrake's concept of morphic resonance. Sheldrake posits that natural systems inherit a collective memory from all previous things of their kind and that morphic resonance is responsible for telepathy-like interconnections between organisms. I know this sounds a bit off, but creatively there's almost a telepathic connection we seem to share. Our interactions with each other creatively have always been very direct and simple. Harris will be in my studio as an example while I'm making work and just say like more red or that's not as good as the last one. And my artistic interaction with them, which comprises a major component of the time we've spent together, has almost exclusively been really simple. It's been to make work alongside them. And so in this show, for the first time, we've actually been working on the same pieces. The show is comprised of a combination of solo works, works made individually, and pieces that we've worked on together. Here again, our collaboration has been largely nonverbal. A typical conversation in our Collaboration is very direct. Our conversations about the work typically last about 30 seconds. I can remember one conversation that we had that initiated uh, a major piece in the show. And if memory serves correct, Henry said something like, what do you think? At least one large painting we all touch. That's one piece. Okay. I think you could better value that. <laughs> wait, wait, before you eat, what are the odds, like how much money would it cost for you not to just show us way in the world? I do it for not that much. It's like 20 bucks? Nah, I do it for 30 bucks. I think I responded with, that insane painting by Murakami at the Broad is a bunch of different styles and mediums and kind of reminds me of some of your stuff mixed with Harris. Maybe that kind of thing would work. And Harris, 
I think said, I love that painting, could be screen printing with painting. And then I responded with, what if Harris started the painting, but with a bright color palette? Harris typically works in a very desaturated, very naturalistic color palette. So basically this, the only prompt would be just work with bright colors, which would tie it uh, uh, more to Henry and my work. And then we would work back into it with screen printing and some other techniques. So no, there was no talk of subject matter or themes or theory. We already know what themes uh, each, of, each of us would bring to the work. And at this point, Harris was left alone to provide us with an unfinished painting. So in the next couple of episodes, I'm going to show our collaboration in greater depth, but I'm gonna keep these videos short. In this video, I'll show that we used an iPad Pro's LiDAR to do a 3D scan of the space. Then I built a scale model of the space in Cinema 4D so that I could lay the show out and start to get a sense of what our work might look like in the space itself. Then I reverted back to a more traditional way of doing a simple 2D elevation drawings after I had a sense of how the three of our work might look in the space.